that Tua is a champion. We should all follow her into battle. Hello, old friend. I bring you herbs for the pain and something else. The Sarantu and Aranehe are friends, and one should always be surrounded by friends as our final moment beckons. The Sarantu returned in my final days. My grandmother once loved one of you. I grew up with the songs of your clan. Perhaps our young Sarantu friend could sing? I know one song, not the words, but... We will talk more outside. Your friend seems brave in the face of death. What courage is there in death? The dead fear nothing. For only the living have something to lose. Such loss cuts to the core of who we are. I see it in my friend, Tsukiri. They lost a close friend recently. You brought great comfort to my friend in his last days. Perhaps you can make headway with Tsukiri where I did not. They say the Sarandu brought people together with stories. I would like to try. You are a credit to them. Tsukiri likes to while away the hours at Weaver's Flourish. I suspect you will find them there, stewing in their grief. Does it ever get to you? To have to face death as part of your duties to the clan? Yes, sometimes. But the people you see, those who die away from here, though they still live in Ewa, their last moments are lost. I only hope Tsukiri does not lose themselves. Are you a hunter? Ah, uh, Natu's die is full of lumps. Natu must find her own joy. I will... The Sky People have become bolder, it seems. Going off on their own, thinking they own this place. I do not wish to see them ever again.
Where is this Shelly, Deko? Nowhere. Why would I risk my life? Tsukiri? Kaya thought I might find you here. Are you looking for something? <sighs> Nothing that can be found. My friend, Eteko, he liked to joke, prank, obsessed with discovery and adventure too. Tried to make me believe he saw some mysterious colorful shell up here. A shell, up here. What a liar. I told him he was lying. He said he would find the shell again and prove me wrong. Then went and got himself killed on the hunt. Before. Would finding the shell bring you comfort? Having something that was important to your friend? It does not exist. It is another one of his pranks. That is all. Tsukiri shell. Has to be. I have good news. I found a Teko shell. Here. For you to remember your friend. But... No. I... Oh... A Teko. You were telling the truth. And I... I was so sure he was just... What a terrible friend I was. He promised once I blew into this shell, I would understand. That it was eerie and haunting. This will be my apology to him then. <laughs> this, this is the haunting sound Iteko wanted me to hear. Haunting is the right word. Iteko has pranked me once again. I cannot wait to join him in Ewa and share this with him. Haunting. <laughs> I will tell the story to Eteko. I cannot wait to see his reaction. Netika will faint to see you in such clothing.
Ready to ride? Danny came out here alone. No traces of anyone else. Where did she go next? Traveling light, had rations, a faint scent, but it's there. So, how much did Jin tell you, anyway? He only mentioned a topic that he shouldn't have brought up. Yeah. That. Timing couldn't be more off. Talking again about starting a family. With your return, Jin saw hope. But I saw the unspeakable evil they've done to you. And what they're gonna do to all of us. So... is that why you're out here? Could say that. I cover a lot of ground in a day. Finding vantage points, identifying potential kill boxes, trying to make us safe, if that's possible. Many of our people can't imagine how bad things will get. I can. Ask the trapped wildlife I came across. Couldn't free it without harming it. Where do you find them? Northwest of HQ. I wish there was more I could do. Leave it to me. Maybe new air filter parts. 
Here is what I have. Do not be caught off guard. Here is what I have. Be safe. Come to gear up. You take care of yourself. Do you think people have started to forgive me? I hope so.
Danny. The wildlife is safe now. Good. I'm glad you bumped into me. Our little chat reminds me... It's been a while since I talked to anyone about this. About anything on my mind, really. I'm back at HQ, near the entrance. Can we... talk more? I'll meet you there. We must not rest until all our DA are removed from Pandora. I'm... Here you go. Have a look. Remember, point away from the user. <laughs> You're back. For now, or do I have a choice? I'm trying to keep us safe. Trying to keep my husband safe. Maybe you should talk to him. Tell him what's on your mind. He seems so in love with you. Jin's got so much love in him, it'd be selfish for me to hoard it all to myself. Only makes sense he'd want a family. Back on Earth, I grew up in a harsh place, shaped by people like Mercer. Always people like him. That look in my parents' eyes always stuck with me. A mix of warmth and fear of failing to protect the one thing that mattered the most. Hell, that animal you freed, it'll look after its own one day, and it'll know that pain. I don't think it's thought that far. It's in its nature to produce offspring and protect its young. Like all parents, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Just dumb instinct and love. Jin can't imagine me failing. He loves me too much. And I don't know how to tell him... I'm terrified. <laughs> I should talk to him.
always young. It needs a firm hand. Oh, the foolish sky people and their preoccupations. The dear Sarentu, come to join me? I have been watching sky people from the shadows and deriving no small amount of amusement from their antics. They scamper to and from a cave near the bottom of wood sprite arches. I am going to see what they are up to down there. Are you game? I can help. I've dealt with sky people before. That is the spirit? Meet you there. Sky people have been moving those dreadful, what do you call it? Metal? Metal boxes out of this cave. Creeping, looking nervous. Might be something useful or valuable to them. It's worth a look. I am sure they think their secrets are hidden from us by the poison mushrooms. The simplicity of this plan is almost endearing. To see the world through such childlike purity. Here, a simple mixture of blaze fruit and nectar will keep you safe from the mushroom's toxin. We can assume whatever it is they are moving, it does not belong to them. Me? Are you not curious to see for yourself? Curious, yes. But to surround myself with their strange metals? Absolutely not.
weathered, old. Instruments, weaving, every little thing. Lure was right. This doesn't belong to them. Telisi. What was inside? You must show me. Instruments, weaving, all sorts of not be artifacts from different clans. They were hoarding these, most likely to sell. Bleeding our home dry is not enough. They seek to mine our heritage as well. This instrument, I was taught to play by my Zeswa friends. We would practice together in the Glade of Light. Our childish mistakes and carefree laughter, all for Ewa to hear. Once these ordinary things are in the hands of those who hate us, they take on another meaning, do they not? Thank you. I am glad to know these will not end up with the Sky People. Perhaps Etuwa's reckless fighting has purpose after all.
children deserve to know what is behind that. Ah, the Sarentu. Perfect. Now, I am no coward, but there is a strange sound that wafts from the hills at night. Small concern given everything we are facing, right? Oh, the children disagree, though. Whenever I return to Home Tree, they say, You always know what is happening, Lei Tao. Why can you not tell us what that sound is? Their curiosity is so charming. And tiresome. What do you think it is? Likely someone with too much free time on their hands. The children think it may be the sky people in the hills nearby. But Nil Nyan, he forbids us from looking into it. The lecture he gave us on danger was so stern and lengthy, my yawns could have shaken home tree loose from its soil. Danger doesn't sound like something that would stop you. Nil Nyan lives a tedious life. He would not recognize actual danger if it walked right up to him and ate his dinner. He is an elder, though. When an elder speaks, we obey, for better or worse. So, if I tell the children what I find, I am also telling them I have gone against an elder's wishes. But you, child, are not a Ranahe. Which means you can help me get the children off my back, as much as I love their endless pestering. RDA gear. Late Thou was right. That sound. A quick fix might stop it. They said that there was a pot of gold at the end of this rainbow. <laughs> More like a pot of crap. Nothing here but danger and risk of death. And then there's that creepy noise I heard last night. It doesn't sound like anything I've ever heard. Let's go, Telisi. Kaye was looking for you earlier. Sounded special. Etua is young. Is naive. She grieves her mother. Sometimes I. W the sound was caused by a Sky People device. Looks like they dropped it. No Sky People around. Don't worry. <laughs> well, well. One less Sky People contraption is a good thing. I will let the children know. Friend. 
I have seen a growing bond between you and E2. Yes. We've been through a lot in a short time. Death bonds us all, but especially if you face it together. This is exactly why E2 needs you now. Is he okay? Yes, yes, at least physically. But his spirit needs healing. Losing an Ikram brings a grief like no other. Itu always chases the moment, but now he must stop and take responsibility. Not his favorite thing. Is there a way I can help? He has helped me. I'd like to return the favor. Only Itu can decide what must be done to say farewell to Zome. Your new Ikran bond may help him see it is time to let go. Perhaps you can find a way together. It would be my honor. Good. The hunters whisper of Itu spending his days at the place where Zomi died. Most likely you will find him there. Everyone says they can cook, but no one does it like me. One of our people heard Vifilu mention going to that place in Stoneblade Ridge, right where the Sky People's deathly shroud hangs. She is talented, of course, but surely she does not plan on removing the filth by herself. Are you not me or beast? Either way, I mean you no harm. What brings you here? Looking for you. Kaya thought I might find you here. In the midst of my loneliness, this place brings me both pain and comfort. Is there a place that reminds you of a happier time with Zome? We used to end the day's hunting at the hunter's lookout point. Zome would stretch her wings and pester me for snacks. The view from there, Elena. <sighs> Show me. We can say goodbye to Zomi. Properly. I know what you are doing. 
and I accept. I accept you as my companion on this, my last journey for Zomi. Always one step ahead of me, Ibu. Have you decided what you want to do? I have thought a little else. How do I celebrate her life and honor her death? I have an idea. Fortune's fruit is sharp and strong like Zomi. Bring me some of this fruit. I have a plan to use the seeds. I will prepare myself and meet you at the lookout point. Fly over the waterfalls and past the arches. Then follow the river until you meet the stone pillar. How do I find Fortune's fruit? The fruit is hidden under the big leaves that catch us when we fall. You must leap and gather it on your way down. Sounds like a challenge. I have faith in you, Elenai. I have seen you leap in much more... My heart is heavy, but having you here will help it soar once more. Anything for you and Zomei. I brought the fruit, like you asked. I will use the seeds. They symbolize new life as you embark on your journey with your bonded, and I mark the end of my journey with Zomei. But... I do not know what to say. Say what's in your heart.
I release these seeds as a symbol of new life and new bonds. The sun to warm them and the rain to nourish them. Let them grow as strong as our bond was, Zomé. I hold your silence in my heart, Zomé. It reminds me that a rash spirit can be a careless one. Forgive me. Fly free in Ewa. I'm so glad I could be here to remember Zome with you. My heart feels lighter now, but it is a long journey. One day, far from now, I might bond again and we shall fly together. <laughs>